uh, HTM update. Um, I'm Remy, uh, HTM lead, and uh, today we'll speak about uh, a few things. So let's start. Um, first, first off, um, I want to welcome Takuya Nogoshi to the core team. Uh, it was a, a, a long, uh, a, a long process to to have him join the core team. Um, we we even uh, got to create a confidential issue to get his attention, but uh, actually, it just uh, it was just that he was very busy and, and didn't see all the emails we sent uh, him. So yeah, very very glad to have uh, Takuya on, on in the core team. Uh, he's been very uh, uh, helpful in issues and and contributing great stuff. Uh, so that's uh, that's super cool. Um, in 10.2, we merged uh, 55 merge requests from the community. Um, feel free to check out the, the, the spreadsheet. Um, I, I highlighted uh, two uh, merge requests uh, below. So the first one is uh, from Jacopo, uh, who is a, a seasoned contributor now. Uh, so it's a Robocop rule, a static analysis uh, rule to improve our, our code base. And that's uh, super cool. And the other one is from George uh, Andrinopoulos, uh, who also uh, uh, submits uh, a great uh, uh, backstage and technical depth uh, uh, solving uh, merge requests. And this one is about creating new services to encapsulate um, the, the destruction of issues and merge requests. Thank you. Um, okay, the next stop is uh, in the performance front. So, uh, as all the teams, uh, all the uh, back end uh, development teams in general uh, at GitLab, uh, we, we worked on improving the performance. And this quarter, so Genshin uh, in particular worked on improving the branches page performance. So I, uh, I, I think I, I mentioned that in the last update, but it wasn't um, uh, yet in, in a, in a deployed basically. So now it, it's been deployed uh, as uh, as of ten uh, two, and uh, the improvement is twenty five percent approximately. So that's great. And um, Genshin didn't stop there. Uh, there's a second improvement that will come in 10.3. And uh, we even have uh, more improvements uh, in mind uh, for the future. So thanks, Genshin. Uh, and yeah, this will, uh, this will even improve in 10.3. Um, three Triage automation. So I mentioned that in my last update too. Um, so triage automation, we are we are uh, uh, so Mark is is uh, working a lot on uh, the new GitLab triage project, uh, which is a, a, a gem that you can use uh, in uh, any project uh, in GitLab. And we are uh, actually already using it to uh, automatically, automatically triage uh, GitLab CE uh, issues, as well as GitLab Runner and GitLab.com support tracker. And we even uh, had Alessio from the CI/CD team um, uh, that contributed a, a new feature uh, that, uh, that was uh, needed for them. And uh, yeah, you can use, uh, so it's a gem uh, that you can uh, very easily use um, in your uh, pipelines. Um, you would just have to define your uh, triage policies in a YAML file, so very similar to, um, to a GitLab CI YAML file, basically. Um, that was one of the, the Q4 key results uh, for us, and we still need to document it and to communicate uh, around it to really uh, uh, make this uh, uh, a more uh, known feature. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, we, we really need to communicate on, on this because this is a re really um, 
uh, powerful uh, yet uh, simple project. And that's, that's really, uh, uh, I think that's really just the start. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, of features uh, that we can add to that um, and improvements. So yeah, we'll definitely do a blog post. Um, GitLab QA, so as I also said in the last update, uh, GitLab QA is getting a lot more love uh, lately. Uh, so we started the documentation uh, just with a, a, a visual explanation of the GitLab QA architecture because it's, uh, it's um, uh, GitLab QA is actually uh, a few things. It's a gem, it's also, uh, there's also a part in the GitLab CE and EE uh, projects and it, there's a lot of um, uh, Docker uh, images involved too, so it's, uh, it's great. I, I, at least for me, it was great to see it visually, so I hope that can help uh, others. Uh, and then the build team presented the training on GitLab QA. Uh, thanks, Jan, Jan Bohm from the build team. Uh, so the video and slides are available. Uh, it's really useful if you want to contribute uh, to GitLab QA as well as understand how it works. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of activity uh, in GitLab QA. Um, uh, I've contributed a uh, scenario uh, to uh, test addition upgrade from CE to EE. So it's very bas basic for now, but uh, it, uh, at least it checks that you can upgrade uh, from CE to EE. Um, then uh, Grigorz uh, improved the, the package QA job, which was called um, something else, but anyway, uh, now it's called package QA. Um, so it's a manual job in every uh, GitLab CE or EE merge request. And if you play it, it will trigger a pipeline in Omnibus. Uh, and then in the end, it will uh, run uh, the QA scenarios. And what's great now is that uh, the, the package QA manual job that you um, played at the start in GitLab, in your GitLab CE or EE merge request, will now wait for the uh, QA scenarios to uh, actually finish. Uh, so, um, and that was not the case previously, so it was uh, making the job a lot less useful. Um, so now it's great because if, if you, um, if you, if your merge request breaks uh, the current QA scenarios, uh, you will have the feedback in your merge request uh, directly. Uh, so just keep in mind that this job is still manual um, uh, because uh, the, the QA, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, trigger uh, through Omnibus and, and the QA uh, scenarios run um, are, are quite uh, long right now, are still a bit long and we are not sure we want to uh, just enable, enable it by default for all the merge request. Um, but yeah, we have a plan to make GitLab QA production ready, thanks to Gregor, uh, who is uh, a lot uh, involved in GitLab QA. So there's a lot of, of improvements uh, there. Uh, testing. So testing, as you as you can see, I didn't uh, talk uh, uh, about testing yet. So that means that it's getting uh, better. Uh, so I've checked and we had only uh, 11 tests test related merge requests in um, 10.2 probably. Uh, I didn't check the link, but uh, in, the, in the last few weeks. And what, what that means uh, is that we have uh, a lot less uh, transient failures uh, for a few weeks uh, and even months now. So it's really, it's really good for the productivity of the team in general. And I think that's, um, that's because of the, the, the retries that we do at the, the, the example and uh, job levels in the CI. But uh, I think that's also due to the new uh, high CPU runners that we are using. And as you can see in the graph, um, the test runs uh, are a lot uh, more stable than before. Uh, if, if you look at uh, my updates from a few months ago, uh, you, you can compare that it was going like 
up and down. It was not stable at all. So right now it's very stable and at least uh, that's, uh, that's cool. So uh, yeah, last time Sid uh, uh, suggested me to, uh, suggested to me uh, like uh, we could use preemptible instances uh, and, and parallelize even more because of the, the cost cut. Uh, the cost cut. Um, so I've created an issue. Uh, it's still uh, it's still discussed. Uh, apparently, it's, it's not coming tomorrow, but uh, that's something that that we that we should keep in mind. Uh, and then, yeah, the best uh, at the end. So um, we now have a script to automatize the CE to EE merge, um, and that's a script that you can run manually uh, if you want um, but the point uh, was uh, as always been to run the script in a, in a CI pipeline schedule pipeline so right now we run the script uh, automatically every three hours uh, and what's what it does is uh, it's merging CE into EE and it uh, gathers the conflict and it will uh, it then it just pushed the branch, it creates a new merge request and it pinged uh, people to, uh, to resolve the conflict, to help resolve the conflicts. And, uh, and that's great. Um, and yeah, if, if there's already a merge in progress, obviously the job will not create a new merge request because it would be uh, useless. Um, but yeah, that's uh, really useful. Um, the people that are involved in the uh, daily CE to EE merge request are, uh, are, are really uh, really liking it. Um, if you if you look at the CE to EE uh, channel uh, in Slack, you will see. And uh, yeah, there will be some improvements that will come uh, shortly. Uh, the first one will be just to post the link uh, to the uh, created merge request in in the in this channel in Slack and uh, also uh, probably to assign the merge request directly to the first person that has to resolve the conflict and then the person will assign to, to the next one in line that has to resolve the conflict. Um, so yeah, that was it. Um, I'm very really excited about this uh, automatic C2E merge. That was, uh, that was a, a long... Uh, very long needed uh, improvement. Um, are the QA video and blog linked from somewhere? For example, the docs. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure we should ask uh, the build team and, and maybe Jan in particular, uh, but I will make sure it is. Uh, linked from from the documentation, definitely. Um, cool. Um, and yeah, how do you see? Yeah, the number of merge requests. Um, yeah, you notice that it's declining. I noticed it too. Um, so I think there's a few things to note. Uh, a few months ago, we had a lot of merge requests uh, for uh, internationalization. And that was, uh, so now it's been uh, externalized basically to the, the crowding service. So we have a lot less uh, community contribution for that. So that was kind of, um, I don't know, we could, I mean, we could uh, probably count all the contributions like uh, the, the, the translation contributions in coding. We could count them as, as uh, uh, community contributions because they are. Uh, so, but unfortunately, they, they are not counted in this graph. So that's, that could be a I, reason. I think it makes sense to look at the, the code. It's great that yeah. we have crowdsourced translation, but we have crowdsourced translation. I think we can leave it at that. Um, yeah. I think we should look at the unique offers of code that got merged every month. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think maybe also uh, the, the teams, uh, I, I, 
I don't explain 100% um, the decrease, but um, maybe that's because our, our teams are more busy uh, on, uh, on uh, features for GitLab um, and have less time reviewing um, community merge requests. Um, that being said, um, I think the total number of community merge requests that are open right now uh, is kind of stable. And I checked um, uh, yesterday, we have also a lot of work in progress uh, merge requests in the community. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not totally sure why it's, it's uh, decreasing. Um, Do you think the number for December will still go up or? Uh, yeah, for December, uh, yeah, it will go up. It will still go up a bit, but uh, not a lot because we are already the 5th of December. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the, um, for the context and Probably we should make it a bigger priority to focus on the merge request coaching. Yeah, yeah, maybe we, we could do that, yeah. Uh, so Tony is asking, can we exclude the previously tr translation MF from this chart? Um, yeah, we could, uh, but I yeah, I don't know if uh, if it's worth uh, spending time uh, on it, um, but yeah, we could we could uh, yeah. I think you are looking at the closed ones uh, too. Yeah, there are thirty nine uh, merged, but yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for, for your questions. Uh, I think if there are no more questions, I uh, will uh, give you back uh, 12 minutes of your time and see you in the team call. So yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks, Jeremy.